Olympian Bruce Jenner joined our Great America panel and told us how the Kardashian household can be full of fun, also a lot of drama. Now take a look when one of the girls, Kim, is scheduled to go for LASIK eye surgery. This is your eye, and this is how he's going to clamp down your eye. They're going to hold it. Seriously, Chloe? And they just take a thin layer of the top of her pupil, and they lift it up. No. Yes, they, they do. don't. Chloe, Chloe, exactly Chloe, I can't let you play with, like, knives and surgery. tools. You're dangerous. Mom, please just call and cancel. Please help me get out of this. Kim, I do the pussycat dolls or I go blind. You're doing the pussycat dolls, Kim. We nope. have a contract. Nope. nope. Okay, nope. end of story. All right, joining us now is one of the stars of that hit E! reality series, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, Kim Kardashian. By the way, she's also the founder of ShoeDazzle.com. Three best-selling workout DVDs, which, by the way, I could probably use. They continue to take Amazon.com by storm. Well, you also have a perfume line and everything? I do have a perfume line coming is that, out Are you the wearing it because it smells good? Do you? I am wearing it. Oh. I have a few samples, yeah. and it's pretty much all I wear. Okay, well, terrific. Well, yeah. good. Um, it's good to see you. I had Bruce here. I've, I've always been a fan of his. And, and, uh, and one of the things that I was asking him, I said, all right, because I've seen the television show. It's, by the way, it's nuts. It and is nutty. It's nutty, but in a fun way. You have a great family. Thank you. And, you know, you don't drink alcohol. Mm -hmm. You don't really party, although all the, quote, young famous girls have the reputation of doing that. You don't. Why? Well, you know what? I definitely go out. I definitely like to hang out. To me, going to parties is dressing up with your girlfriends. I work so much that it's the time to get ready together, dress up. Yeah, go I dress out. up all the time. I, that's, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, have, I wear jeans every night. It's not a secret anymore. But go ahead. And and then you know, I I never go to an after party. I'll go out. I'll have you know a few dances, and then then I'm out. I just have never liked the taste of alcohol. You, you just don't like it. So, I and just don't like it. Do you like the fact that some girls look up to you because of that as a role model? Definitely. I mean, yeah. I know that when I was 14 years old, my, my father taught me how to drive. And he said, you know, your older sister one day, she might get into drinking and all of her friends. And I want to teach you to drive. So if anything happens, you never let anyone drink and drive. And you call me. And yeah. there, there was an incident once when I had to drive my sister and all of her friends when right. I was 15 home and called him, the, you know, as soon as Good. I got there. And I, I and felt this. Are you a close? Uh, the, Everyone remembers your dad because he was one of the lawyers in the O.J. Simpson case. Mm -hmm. But you were very close to him, and you, he, he died at pretty young, at, at 59. Mm -hmm. um, and you were on Dancing with the Stars, which, by the way, I think is a gutsy thing to do. <laughs> it and, was tough. And you, you were the, lost, what, at the fifth anniversary after his death? Yeah, my father passed away a little over five years ago. So the day I was kicked off, I remember the show was really tough for me. And I cried so hard that night of the performance. And I right. just said, I just want to go home, Dad, if you're, like, listening. Like, just do whatever you think that I can handle. And then I got kicked off that night. And right. I was like, okay, this is a sign. I wasn't meant to be here any longer. And you answered my prayer. No, but that, I think that's a gutsy thing to do. By the way, I never do it. I, I didn't even dance at my wedding. Isn't that awful? <laughs> You didn't? I swear I did not. That I took one is awful. It's awful. I'm a bad yeah. husband. I've been married 17 years, so that's that's so okay. maybe so maybe if I don't dance at my wedding, then that's that good omen. Longevity, exactly. That'd be good. Um, you believe, for example, you gave a quote to Playboy, and mm -hmm. you were in Playboy. We're going to get to that question in a second. Uh -huh. And you used to say your prayers before going to bed that you would stop developing. Yes. And uh, and that you quote you you had to embrace this idea about how you look. Yes. So many girls are so fixated on this. You, this is important to you. It is really important to me. You know, I, I just, right now, I'm, I just shot for the cover, cover of Muscle and Fitness. Mm -hmm. And when I look at magazines like that, I, I look at these, you know, really fit girls, and I, I feel like I'm curvy. So when I do magazine covers like that, I feel very empowered, and I feel that I'm representing the curvy women. And right. it's it's not so sexy to be stick skinny. It's not me. It's, it's, it's who you are. And by the way, I, I'm I'm going to be on the cover of you know fat old guy with gray hair <laughs> magazine. And uh, well, I'm getting in shape though. I've lost a lot of weight you uh, look because good. I, I've been working out. Um, Have you been uh, using the uh, fit in your jeans by Friday? No, I can't fit in my jeans to, on, <laughs> on Monday or Sunday. So I forget about Friday. Um, I want to ask you, why Playboy? That's the only thing I didn't understand in your bio. That didn't make sense to me. Why would you, why, and I know you went through that in the first year of your show. Yeah, I did it a long time ago. Um, I, it was a decision at that time that I felt like I was okay to handle, and I felt like it was iconic, and so many fabulous women have done it, and I'm right. going to prove that I can do this magazine that mm -hmm. shows everything, and you can be 
fabulous and curvy. When I looked at magazines like that, I thought you had to be this anorexic skinny model. Right. It didn't represent to me a mm -hmm. voluptuous woman, and I thought the, I wanted to do it. Do you have any moral qualms about doing that? Because my daughter, who's young, if she ever wanted to do it, I want to kill her. Yeah, exactly. And you probably understand that from a father's standpoint. I definitely do. So then why, why did that go through your mind when you were making the decision to do that? Um, we did talk about it with my whole family, and Bruce, my stepdad, mm -hmm. gave his opinion because we kind of... Well, he, so he's with me. Oh, yes. When yeah. we talked about it as a whole family, and that's how we make our big decisions, that was a big decision. And Bruce said, you know what, I'm sticking up for your dad. He would in no way want you to do this. And, you know, if my dad were here, I don't know, I would be very uncomfortable. I would. Well, yeah, you would be. I would be very, you know, uncomfortable. It's your dad. You know, yeah. you do play with. But my mom is very empowering and wanted me to make a decision on my own and thought that I could look back at this magazine, you know, years to come mm -hmm. and feel like I represented the curvy, voluptuous women. And, mm -hmm. I, and I'm very proud Good of Good thing they don't have that for the men because there's not <laughs> enough airbrushing in the world for, for guys. All right. You, now, you knew and, and were friends with and actually work with, like, um, with Paris Hilton uh -huh. and with Lindsay Lohan. Uh -huh. Those are two girls that I look at that are from the outside, and I, I don't follow the celebrity world as much as everybody else, mm -hmm. but I would be very nervous for their future or Britney Spears mm -hmm. because, you know, you read the stories about the drinking and the partying and the carrying on. Um, do you worry that we're going to wake up and there's going to be a situation, uh, Marilyn Monroe, Elvis Presley, you know, that these girls, you know, one of them is going to go too far and a tragedy is going to occur? Um, I do get worried, you know, when, when anyone is living, you know, a lifestyle like that. However, I think that you have to understand that these girls, I mean, I'm 28 years old. Mm -hmm. These girls, you know, Lindsay's a teenager. I mean, she must be 21 now. She's about 21, but She's yeah. 21. I mean, we've seen this cycle of her life when she's 18. I don't know what... I would do. I mean, I remember seeing Britney Spears once, and the cars are all blocked off because they're chasing yeah. her. But you go through that. You I, live through I that. I go through that, but not really to that extent. I yeah. mean, it's it's definitely but more. But you're controlled. friends with Lindsay and and with Paris. Have you ever called them and reached out to them and said, "Hey, you know, can I help you? Is are you okay? Is this too much?" I, no, I haven't really reached out. I mean, I think. Um, you know, they have their family and their their own like inner circle of friends that they go to for stuff like that. But I've I've worked with them all and I've been friends with them all. But I, I also think that people are going to go through whatever they're going to go through. Yeah. And um, it's just really must be hard because there's such a watchful eye. So I think the media does tend to elaborate on things and make things a bigger deal than what they are and kind of fabricate things. Right. So you never know what's true, at least because I've seen stories that aren't true about myself. So mm -hmm. I never know what's true. So I would never want to pry into someone else's life and say, hey, are you okay for this? When it could totally be a made-up story. Well, it's true, but it may be, too, that you could offer them some counsel and advice. Look, you have a great head on your shoulders. You're Thank doing you. terrifically well, and uh, it's very nice to meet you. And, Thank and, you. And your dad, your 